Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're going to take a look at recreating this grid effect right inside of After Effects. So, let's go and take a look at what we're going to be creating. Alright, so pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, originally this design was actually created as a pitch for this company called LinkedIn. Basically, it's a way to keep in touch with your professional friends through the process of sending non-stop spam messages to you. So it's really cool, really clever. Uh, so I had this idea to create this title and the network represents all the connections and stuff like that. But instead of sending everyone a video, we would send a single frame of the animation one day at a time. And then after, you know, a few months, they could put it together and they could watch it. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the LinkedIn guys weren't a big fan. They, uh, frankly, they wanted to send more emails and that wasn't enough for them. So, anyways. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create a new composition. We'll make this 10 seconds long and uh, we'll call this the grid and hit OK. So the first thing I want to do is create the basic grid design and the way we're going to do that we're going to create a new solid and uh, we'll call this grid and then let's come over to the effects and presets and type in lightning and here we have advanced lightning we'll drop that out here now we have a cool bolt of lightning but instead of using it to create lightning we're going to go ahead and play around with the settings and try to create some kind of futuristic grid. So let's change the lightning type to bouncy. And uh, this just kind of creates a little bit more wild noise. Let's jump into the glow settings and uh, just turn this down so that we could just see the main pattern. Now it's a little bit chaotic so let's go down to the expert settings. And we'll turn the complexity down to about 2. And that's going to simplify this. So then let's turn the turbulence back up. So we'll set that to 10. And that's the max value here. So now we're starting to create something that's a little bit more interesting. So let's move the position. It's like some kind of wild spider. Perfect. And uh, let's take a look at a few of these settings. So we have forking. We can also decay the effect, so kind of make it dry up, basically. So let's turn on the decay main core, and that way we can kind of fade this whole thing out. So let's set this to about 0.15, and then we can play with the minimum fork distance. So the higher the value, the less forking, and the lower the value, the more forking. So let's turn the fork strength up a bit, so this is looking pretty good and we can move this around and uh, see a few different patterns. Uh, we can play with the conductivity state and this will also kind of change the, the overall look here. So pretty fast, easy way to kind of give us a bunch of different looks. And then we can quickly go to the minimum distance, crank that up to just kind of lower the detail. So this is the basic idea of how we're going to set this up. Now let's go and animate the decay. So we'll set a keyframe, hit U, and we'll set this up as high as we can. So whatever that value is. But unfortunately, it's not very linear. It's not very smooth. So let's go into the track editor, the graph editor, and we can hit F9 or do the Bezier curve. And we just want to create a really, really sharp drop off into the next keyframe. So really, really fast drop off and uh, that should help smooth out the animation. One of the things that we're going to create is this digital growth and what it is is just some various patterns of this lightning growing out in a pattern. So what I want to do is sort of try to recreate this. Let's take our grid lightning and pre-compose it. So Control Shift C or pre-compose at the bottom there. 
and uh, we'll move all the attributes and we'll call this digital growth and uh, hit OK. Then we'll change the color to, I don't know, blue and let's double click on the digital growth. And now what I want to do is first I'm going to just take this and uh, move it over. So we want to size it down and if we hit U we can see our keyframe. So maybe move it a little closer together here. So what I want to do is set the transfer mode to screen and then duplicate the layer. So edit, duplicate. And what I can do is I can just change the conductivity state and there I've created a brand new instance. So I'm going to offset the layer now. And the idea is as the other growth finishes, we want uh, the secondary growth to begin. So this one goes in the next one and maybe whatever pattern it's growing out towards we can sort of grow it that way so let's duplicate it again play with the uh, settings here uh, this kind of creates a cool kind of directional growth uh, we can also play around uh, with the look of this so another thing I always like to talk about is experimentation and you know a lot of this is basically experimentation just playing around with it coming up with different looks so if you're watching a tutorial and you're curious what might happen if you do this or if I did that well just pause the tutorial for a second and start playing around just kind of save your project you know save a copy so that you can have an experiment project and you know what happens when you change the complexity to three you know, do you get a different pattern and then you change the, you know, the settings and that looks, you know, like a completely different sort of digital grid, but it's definitely cool as well. So, so having some time to experiment is really critical when you're using After Effects and, uh, you know, we try to make tutorials that show you broad possibilities, uh, but definitely feel free to just take a moment and start experimenting. So that's cool. So we'll move this over here. Um, you know, and also play around with the size of these. We don't want them to all be the uh, the same size. We want to kind of feel like it's very random. So here we'll duplicate it, change the conductivity state. Let's see here. Maybe move these all down a touch. And you can also play with the, you know, the core radius. You can play around thicken that up a bit, as well as the core drain. This will actually fill it up in uh, in a kind of a different way. This is essentially what I did with those other digital comps. So let's go and create a black solid called this background, and uh, hit OK. And uh, we'll drag this down to the bottom. And then we're going to do a new adjustment layer. So what I want to do is create some various dots. And there's a really cool effect. Uh, it's called CC star, let's see, star burst. And you would never think to look for this effect, but it's uh, quite interesting. So let's throw it onto this adjustment layer. And let's set the scatter and the speed to zero. And what it does is it creates these cool dots. And these dots will follow the pattern of whatever is beneath it. So let's say we set the transfer mode to screen. Well, now we've got the dots on top. Now, there's one trick that we need to do, and that is the channel solid composite effect. Set this to black. And that will fix the alpha and the holes around the edges. But what we can do is play around with the grid spacing maybe change the size of these dots and uh, we could even use a curves adjustment to brighten them up but it's just kind of a cool way to add some random detail then if we play around with the scatter effect we can actually offset them to being slightly various uh, positions and such let's go ahead and create another adjustment layer and we'll see another cool effect so 
Let's say I wanna add somewhat of a grid effect on top of this, um, like a basic math grid effect. But I want it to grow as our design grows. So here's what we'll do, we'll type in mosaic and uh, we'll throw this on here. And this is a pretty fun effect. So turn on sharp colors and turn up the blocks. So this is like for blurring out you know, faces of people who aren't supposed to be in your video or you know, anonymous tipsters. So it's an interesting effect, but what we're actually gonna use it for, actually I'm gonna shut the sharp colors off. We're gonna use it to create some edges. So type in find edges and invert that. And so now we have a, a little bit of a pattern here. So look at this, it grows on. And then we can screen it back on top of our final design. And if we hit T, we can lower its opacity. So this way we create just kind of an interesting grid. But instead of making it uh, square, I actually want it to be rotated. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna choose Effect Distort Transform. Uh, it's on the list there, we could just type it in here, transform. So what I'll do is I'll take the transform and put it before the mosaic effect and set the rotation to about 45 degrees. And you can see our pattern kind of rotates a little bit. Then if we take another transform, put it after the find edges, we can set it to negative 45 degrees. And so now we have a pattern that is diamond shaped. And if we go back into the mosaic, we can tweak the size of the boxes to create a different effect. So now we'll set it to screen. And now we have a cool kind of diamond pattern, which I would say this makes it about 45% more futuristic. We can also play around with the block size. So the smaller the blocks, uh, the larger the grid area. And uh, you know that'll help create some various uh, looks. Let's do like 75 by 75. And the comp's not square, so let's stretch that a bit. And let's just lower the opacity here just for a more subtle effect. Nice. And then we can add some colorization, so another adjustment layer with a glow. Turn up the radius a bit. And then we could do uh, curves adjustment. And we could just do, uh, bring the red channel down, blue channel up a bit, maybe the green channel up a bit. So that's uh, pretty much the basic idea. And then we can pre-render this. So we could say, just go to the end of this animation hit N, add this to the render queue, and say render off a QuickTime movie, and then re-import it so that we can actually just use the pattern. So just a little bit easier to work with a QuickTime instead of having to render the comp multiple times. Okay, now we can speed this up by just going into the animation and uh, bringing these keyframes a little bit closer together, but I think this will work for now. Let's go back to our grid comp, and let's take our digital growth and we'll just turn it off for the moment. All right, so now we need to create our three-dimensional grid. One of the cool things about the advanced lightning effect is that it is affected by the layer's alpha. So in this case, we have an alpha channel, and then we can copy our lightning effect and paste it. So let's come in here to our first grid that we created, take that lightning copy, edit, copy, and jump back over here to our title template, which we will make red, and let's choose Edit Paste. So here is the animation. Let's hit U and remove the keyframe. So we'll just unclick that and it'll be static. So there's this option called Composite on Original. We click that and now it's rendering on top of our original. Now, if we look closely, it's not interacting with our alpha channel. However, there's an option called alpha obstacle. And as we crank that up, we can actually see that the lightning is affected by the alpha channel. So this is quite cool and probably a fun thing that you could do all sorts of stuff with. So let's use this. So we'll take it, we'll hit control D 
duplicate it. Let's put a copy over here. Uh, let's hit Control D, put another copy over here, uh, and maybe just one more up in this direction, or maybe two more. Let's see. I feel like this one's not. It's not conducting enough for me. I, I think the conductivity probably needs to be more. Never mind. Anyway, uh, let's see. Maybe we could play around with some of the settings as well and even move some of our other copies around. And not that I don't think this is okay. I just want to make sure that later on when we duplicate the copies that we're getting enough variation on our uh, title design. This is looking pretty good. Now, another thing that we're going to do to this particular copy is we'll take these, we'll hit Control A, collapse them, and we can add more copies and stuff uh, and even play around with uh, you know the decay so that some of them are shorter, etc. What I want to do is add another effect. So we'll go ahead, collapse this, and we'll type in tint. And we'll take the tint effect and put it before the lightning. And let's set the white color to black. And so what this does is creates just an outline of just the electrical stuff. And we might even come over here and type in turbulent displace and throw this maybe before the tent as well and this is basically an effect that creates kind of wild distortion now in this case it's before the advanced lightning so if we were to put it afterwards it would do something like that but I'm actually gonna put it before and it's just gonna displace our text but we're gonna do it very subtly so let's take this turn the size down to like 20 and the amount down as well, so just a bit. Now let's turn the tint back on. Now the idea is that if we adjust the evolution, we can actually change all of the lightning effects below it because essentially we're changing the alpha channel and therefore the lightning effects have to be updated. Now we can also go into each of these and play around with the conductivity state to give it some more variation as well. Now let's be careful that the size is relatively small and uh, we don't want to have too much intensity on this effect. All right, so here is our basic copy of our title. So what I want to do is hit F4, set it as a 3D layer, set the transfer mode to screen, and then I'm going to duplicate the layer. And then we'll play around with the turbulent offset. And then we'll take this copy and push it back in Z space. So we'll just push it back a touch. And let's create a camera as well. Do like uh, 35 millimeter. Hit OK. And if we hit C, we could take the unified camera tool. And if we click in here, we can start to see a little bit of dimensionality. Now, it's looking a little bit too repetitive. So let's play around with some of the settings. So what we could do is just go through, change the conductivity state for a couple of the copies uh, until we see something a little bit more unique. So that's looking pretty good. And then let's duplicate that copy and control D. And maybe push that back in some Z space. Change the uh, turbulent displace. And that's also going to change the silhouette of the grid so that it's not perfectly clear what the words say. We want to sort of reveal that at the very end. So again, we'll go through tweak some of the uh, conductivity states here. All right, now let's come back to this for a second. Let me duplicate the top layer. And I'm going to right click there. Now let's come back to the original copy, the title template, and hit Control D. Let's take this and let's remove all of the effects. So we could choose Effect, Remove All. And that way we just have our original grid again. And I'm going to take that copy, bring it to the top of the stack, change the color to yellow. And we'll move it forward in Z space just a touch. So that way we have just a little bit of depth uh, and variation here. All right, so we've got the basic idea here. We can start playing around with our front title. Now, what we could do is we could actually set this to something like normal, and that way it's not translucent. Uh, we could also duplicate the copy here, the yellow copy, 
and maybe do a find edges and maybe set this version inverted and set this version to screen and maybe push this back so this way we're starting to create sort of a wireframe shell if you will we'll put that below And it just starts creating some weird, you know, dimensionality that uh, is somewhat abstract, but helps to recreate the final form. So let's do a quick colorization and uh, kind of see where we're at and what else we need to do. So let's create a black solid for the background. I could just copy the other one, but eh, what are you going to do? And we'll create a new solid. Let's do something like... Uh, I don't even think it matters. Uh, let's set it to screen and do a ellipse and maybe just F, bring up the mask settings, turn up the feathering out. Let's kind of feather that out a bit. There we go. And then we'll create a new adjustment layer and we'll call this color correction. So we'll hit return CC. And let's come over here and type in tint. This is why it didn't matter because we were about to desaturate it anyway. And then we'll do curves. And here we want to play around with this. And we also want to do a glow. So we'll take the glow effect, maybe before that, set it to screen and turn up the radius a bit. All right, so on the curves effect, we want to start playing around with this. And what I might do is turn on the depth of field for the camera. So hit AA, turn depth of field on and crank up the aperture a bit and that's going to create a much more interesting look uh, and definitely a much more organic look but we can actually use this to help kind of get a sense for the overall look now the background uh, grid effects are a little bit bright so I might take just the bottom four copies right here. Hit T and lower the opacity to maybe 90%. Maybe a little less. Maybe 78. And that way our title grid is actually a little bit brighter. And maybe bring the focus point forward a touch. There we go. And by the way, you have some different iris control inside of CS6. You could do some things like pentagons. Um, they're a little bit slower, but you could create some different looking uh, out of focus elements, uh, which definitely look a little bit nicer, and you can just set it to the higher quality uh, when you're ready to render at the end. All right, so about this colorization. So we'll go back to the color correction. Let's go to the green channel. Let's turn the green up a bit. And also the blue channel. Let's crank that up as well. And maybe just create a contrast curve, a reverse contrast curve like this. I even bring this down a touch. Now let's go to the RGB and drop that down as well. All right, so we've got the basic color correction going here, and uh, things are looking pretty good. Now we want to start adding more of that fine detail. So. One thing that we could do actually is take the camera, hit AA, and zoom it out just a little bit, maybe down to a thousand. And that'll just pull out the camera a touch. We could probably turn off the depth of field. One quick way to do that is just turn off this draft 3D setting. And uh, that makes things a little bit nicer uh, to just go back and forth. Now, I want the grid title to transition in. So we're going to type in grid wipe. So it's transition effect, CC grid wipe. Let's drop that onto our top title. And this basically is a cool little transition. So we'll turn the completion up till it's completely covered and move that keyframe over to the beginning and then open it all the way up. So Very nice. And again, we can use the screen transfer mode as well. Maybe we could even duplicate a copy, set this to multiply, push it back in Z-space a bit, uh, maybe even offset the transition, 
and just create some slight variations to it. So definitely can uh, have some fun with that. All right, so that's the basic idea of the transition. But now we want to add some more detail to the grid pattern. So we'll come over here to our pre-rendered digital growth and let's just drag it out into our comp. So let's just put a little bit of it behind the title, so beneath the yellow and the red. And let's set the transfer mode to screen. And so here's our kind of main pattern. We'll scale it down a touch. Okay, and we'll take another copy, say the five copy, set it to screen as well. And uh, maybe take one more copy, screen, and uh, scale it down a touch. Now this copy, what we could do, uh, let's make sure all these layers are 3D, so hit F4, and turn on the 3D layer switch. There we go. And we'll take that last copy and let's move it forward in Z space. Maybe put it up a little higher so that way it just has a little more depth here. So the idea now is how do we create more out of focus elements up close? Well, what we'll do is duplicate a copy, bring it forward, maybe off screen a touch, and then we'll duplicate another copy push it back, scale it up, move it off screen. All right, so now we can see we're just kind of creating a vast kind of field of, uh, of different layers. And now if we turn our depth of field back on, you can see we've created a much more interesting pattern with that background out of focus element, with the foreground out of focus element, and as I said before, we can go into the depth of field, switch it, and get a slightly nicer looking uh, pattern to this out of focus stuff. So pretty cool. I think one of the things you really want to do is make sure you have different levels of detail. So that's having stuff that's uh, small and large uh, and just you know play around with duplicate copies and stuff. Uh, maybe move the camera. You can start to see the depth here. There we go. Starting to get the uh, idea here. All right, so this is the basic idea of the tutorial. And uh, go ahead, feel free to experiment with all of the different settings. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to follow us on Twitter. Check out the website. We've got some great stuff happening on the blog. And of course, check out our great Video Copilot products, Element 3D. Um, really cool plugin for doing other 3D type of stuff inside of After Effects. All right, I'm Andrew Kramer. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.